After using multiple Synology NAS options for years and then using a UNAS Pro from Ubiquiti, I started to realize that a Mac Mini was more what I actually needed. In this video, I'll show you my setup and why I think it could be more of what you're looking for with a new network attached storage device or NAS. And stay tuned to the end where we'll discuss the one reason why you really might want to still actually get a standard NAS. So believe it or not, not, Apple does continue to update the Mac Mini. It remains a product in their lineup. And a lot of this video isn't specific to any one model of Mac Mini. In fact, I think you might have great luck saving money on this kind of setup by buying a refurbished Mac for this or repurposing an existing Mac you already have. At this point though, I don't think you should consider an Intel Mac for this kind of task. One feature that is worth seeking out is 10 gigabit ethernet. This will give you better throughput to other computers on your network than gigabit ethernet, assuming your home network has the capability to serve that now or in the future. The other thing you'll need is some kind of external hard drive. Now, to get similar benefits of a NAS, I like one of the RAID enclosures, let's say from OWC. These are a great value in my opinion and give you a lot of flexibility, not to mention the speed benefits and data redundancy potentials of multiple hard drives. And a lot of those options work over Thunderbolt. But if you're looking for simplicity and want to save some money up front, you could just get a large external hard drive, maybe even one you already have sometimes even in a RAID. Just keep in mind that if you plan on using these hard drives a lot with any of these options we'll get into in this video, then you should really have NAS grade drives that are capable of handling those heavy workloads. Also, you don't need to have a monitor for this Mac, but I do find it helpful to have one. You could repurpose an old monitor like I did or any number of other ways to get a view into that Mac Mini. You could alternatively purchase a little cheap HDMI dongle that can act as a display, which could help in certain edge cases if you're running it without a monitor. Now that we've got the hardware out of the way, we're ready to get into all the ways I use my Mac Mini. Now, first, there's an important thing a NAS might do for you where you could probably use a purpose-built alternative, and that's video surveillance, where this video sponsor, Eufy, comes in. If you get a pro-level iPhone, it comes with multiple cameras, so you can get the right shot in different circumstances. Why should your video surveillance be any different? Eufy agrees and has put multiple cameras in their Eufy PoE Bullet PTZ Cam S4, which then connects to the Eufy PoE NVR security system S4. Each camera has a triple lens setup with a wide angle fixed 4K camera to get a great view of the whole scene. Then its dual lens system can pan 360 degrees and tilt 70 degrees to track moving subjects and zoom in with 8X optical zoom. This all means you can have a single camera track a large area and ensure you aren't missing any details of what's going on. These cameras connect to Eufy's MVR, or Network Video Recorder. This is capable of handling up to eight of these PoE Bullet PTZ Cam S4 cameras. You can connect this MVR via HDMI to a display and have an always on glance at your system. The MVR also comes with storage built in, mine shipped with two terabytes, which should be plenty to store days and days of recording depending on your camera setup. Maybe you have other Eufy cameras already, like my favorite battery option, the S3 Pro. This PoE and VR system can be viewed right alongside your existing cameras in the Eufy app. Setup for these cameras was also super easy for me. Once you have the ethernet line running between the NVR and the camera, the camera just sets itself up. No need to do any extra binding or adopting in the app. And for the times you just want a single camera view and you don't need a fancy PTZ option, Eufy has the PoE Turret E41. This gives you the same great 4K image and 122 degree field of view as you get with the Cam S4's wide angle camera, but without the additional PTZ cameras. I set one of these up in my garage for a view of our cars and it's great. If you want a more traditional bullet form factor, Eufy also has that for their MVR system with the E40 camera. To learn more and consider getting a PoE MVR system for your home, check out the link at the top of the description. Thanks again to Eufy for monitoring my home and sponsoring this video. I don't know about you, but my Apple Photos library is getting bigger and bigger. 
And now that we have shared libraries, I love having access to all my family memories, but getting an Apple device that has enough storage built in to have my entire photo library alongside everything else and some growing room, well, <laughs> the, just that storage upgrade alone might cost more than the setup we're talking about today. And that's just with the photo storage, not anything else. Things like a stolen iPhone where someone also snoops your passcode or any number of social engineering hacks could end up losing you access to your iCloud account. And then your photo library in that iCloud account is gone. Now there are many services out there that can back up your photos to somewhere else, but that doesn't have all your albums and your favorites and face detection and more. And well, all that can be redone, it could be a lot of time to replace all that setup. And that's where a little known secret of macOS photos comes in. You can run your system photo library on a Mac off of an external hard drive. This means you can get affordable storage prices to save all your memories on a computer hard drive. And because it's a dedicated machine, you can tuck it away in a cabinet or a closet in your home where you won't hear the clicking hard drive. Just be sure it has enough ventilation and doesn't get too hot. Your Mac mini can also work well as a time machine server. This means you can share a partition or your entire drive as a time machine disk. So I'm here remoted into the Mac mini from over in my office and I can go ahead and set up time machine. Now I've already created a volume here called shared TM, which we're gonna use to share our time machine. So if I go to system settings and then I go to sharing and then I go to file sharing, you'll see here I have Dropbox as a shared folder, but then I also, okay, I need to, um, okay, so I had to put in my admin password there and then I select my shared time machine drive. So now shared TM is shared on the network, but I actually need to right click on shared TM, go to advanced options, and then I can say share as a time machine backup destination. And then I could limit backups to a particular size. We're not gonna have a limit here. And then I hit okay. And that will allow shared TM to be visible by Max on my network as a time machine destination. Once you go and do the settings for time machine and set that up. Then the Mac you use on a regular basis and your family Macs can all back up to that central drive on your network. And yes, of course, I can hear you in the comments already. Standard NAS can do this as well, but it's important to know that Apple does also have this first party solution for it built into Mac OS. Now, I love tucking my 11 inch iPad Pro with Magic Keyboard under my arm and taking it with me as I go around town for kids, family, or work. Then, as I have spare downtime, I can pull it out, use cellular data, and get some things done for this YouTube channel. This sounds a bit extreme, but I can't imagine trying to be a husband, father to three kids, manager of a team at work, and YouTube here without having my iPad to take advantage of lots of those bits of downtime. That's probably a topic for another video, but relevant to this one is that iPadOS is not meant to do everything a Mac can do. And there are some of those times where I would love to just have a Mac drop in to help. And that's where having this Mac always ready on my home network can be super helpful. I've tried a bunch of remote desktop clients and screen sharing software, but the one I like the best is Jump Desktop. It tends to handle a lot of the connection edge cases and flakiness the best. And beyond just being a Mac, it's great that this machine that I'm accessing is on my home network. That means I can get to smart home stuff that's harder to get to away from my home, like let's say my Sonos speaker system. Macs are critical for getting much of my work done as well. Aside from remoting into this Mac mini, it's nice to know I have this Mac as something I could take out of the closet and use if my main computer was stolen or needed repairs. I couldn't do that with a standard NAS. But NAS, right? It's right there in the name. You usually get a network attached storage device for sharing files on your network. A Mac can do that too. Just enable the sharing of the drive with the SMB protocol and you can connect from a Mac or PC on your network, not to mention iPhones and iPads as well. But 
What about also syncing this data with a cloud service? This can often make it easier for you and others to access these files outside of your home, especially if like me, you have cable internet with a slow upload speed and lots of files or big files. And well, I do have fast download speeds, nothing also beats working with files locally on your network. So Synology, I mentioned at the front of the video, has an app for their NAS system called CloudSync. And this enables you to create a local synchronized copy of your data from a cloud file provider. But it uses the APIs for services like Dropbox, which means you get limited options for things like shared Dropbox team folders. And a Mac with a native client for that file provider doesn't have those third-party limitations. I have my Mac Mini using my external drive as the source for Dropbox, and it syncs everything locally to my Mac Mini because my external drive has the space. If you sync lots of videos or photos, this could be a lifesaver. Not only is it great to have local copies of my video files that I need to reference and put in these videos, but I also use this Mac Mini as an ingest machine. This means when I'm done shooting YouTube videos, I can go over there, pop in my memory cards, and get my footage straight to my network and the cloud for my editor Tom or myself to work on. The Dropbox for Mac client also has a feature that lets me prioritize syncing of certain files if I need to get some footage to Tom quickly for the next project. This is all leaving aside the options of running various Docker containers like Scripted or Homebridge or Home Assistant on my Mac. This is certainly possible. I just end up preferring dedicated hardware for things like Home Assistant and Homey in separate places in my home. Another thing we haven't even discussed is using apps like Hazel or Shortcuts to automatically take actions on files sent to your Mac Mini based on certain criteria. So, okay, there's all this great stuff, but what's the big reason why you'd still wanna get a traditional NAS over a Mac Mini? And I think it's the cost. There are so many different configurations of Macs and NAS hardware that it's impossible to pencil out clear price differences, but particularly if you're looking at the low end of network attached storage, or you absolutely must have lots and lots of slots for hard drives, then a NAS is probably gonna be less expensive. Just consider based on all this, if it's not worth the extra money to still go with some kind of a Mac mini setup instead of a NAS. Now, do you already have a Mac running like this? Are you considering it? Or what questions or other cool ways to use this do you wanna share with all of us in the comments below? We'd love to hear it. And if you're looking at a traditional NAS, I do have a video right here all about the Ubiquiti UNAS Pro that you might wanna consider if you have lots of hard drives. Also, thanks to Eufy for sponsoring this video. You can find out more about their NVR system at the top of the description. Thanks again so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.